that's uh, blowing our own trumpet, but what we believe is that the World Wide Web is becoming the World Wide Video Web. So we call dub 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 becoming dub dub dub. And basically that the internet and video are synonymous and everything that you consume on the internet, soon you'll have Wikipedia becoming a video live on an option, right? So AI will convert text to video with images and a voiceover layer. So we believe one, that the internet and video are synonymous. The second thing that we believe in, which is very relevant for you know, uh, this entire industry is the decentralization of, uh, of influencers and of the internet, which basically means that I think the dot coms and the destinations are giving way to uh, the artists themselves. So, uh, you know, and Arman Malik is a destination by himself. Whether you find him on YouTube or you find him on Smule or you find him on, uh, on if you follow him on Snapchat or Instagram, Arman Malik is a destination. The apps are the satellites around him. And that's what I mean by the decentralized internet. And so the dot com model about finding him in one place uh, has moved on. And so also with that example for a lot of indie artists. And we have Arman coming up on the panel, uh, which is awesome. And we also have an indie artist coming up on the panel. Uh, let me quickly, since we have the chairs up here, you all know Yvonne. Yvonne, why don't we have you back up here? Yvonne, come on over. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Yvonne back on stage. We have Keshav Dhar from Sky Harbor. Keshav, come on over. We have uh, Kailash Adhikari, the promoter of Sri Adhikari Brothers and representing Masti, the music channel. Saurabh Sharma from Smule. Raise your hands, all of you who've used Smule or know of Smule. Oh, you've got to see more hands than that. That's doing millions of daily installs. Okay, and we have Arman Malik. Arman, come on over. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep this moving really quick. Um, I want to actually uh, maybe start with, so what you'll see over here is we've got a, a consumer-facing app, which is Smule. We're going to juxtapose some of those views on direct-to-consumer or direct-to-fan engagement with Musti, which is, uh, if, you know, going by the numbers, the largest music channel in the country. And so how do they reach out to audiences on TV and maintain those audiences on TV versus how an app does it? So very interesting sort of segues into each other. Uh, we've got an independent artist, Keshav, uh, and you'll be blown away by how they've raised money for some of their videos. Uh, how many artists in this, uh, in this group here? Right? Let me ask you a quick question. What do you think, how many of you have used crowdfunding as a platform to raise money for your videos? Anybody? Try to win Vishkari, right? Now, what do you think, if I told you that you could raise two lakhs on a crowdfunding platform for your video, would you be excited? What if you could raise 20 lakhs for your video? That's what this gentleman did here for his band. So we'll hear that story. 20 lakhs for his music video on a crowdfunding platform with Indians contributing using credit cards. So that's, that's you know, very interesting story there. <laughs> Kailash will, of course, speak about uh, the whole TV side we discussed. And you know, we have Yvonne talking about connecting all of this with the data units. And uh, Arman, obviously, speaking from the mainstream artist side, how it is working with brands and uh, how you know he's got like four million fans on Insta, man, and six million on Facebook, something like that. Just ten million on those two. And what is your Snapchat following now? It's good enough. Okay, yeah, lots of engagement, but only the uh, the private stuff goes on Snapchat, right? <laughs> okay, all right, awesome. So uh, you know, maybe Saurabh, we can start with you, and uh, if you can just share with the uh, uh, with the group here. What is it, you know, the three things that, uh, that Smule has done, and Smule is a, is a karaoke app, right? That you, and you're the first India head representative for we, Smule. We call it as a music community. A music uh, community, okay. Yeah. Uh, so what we have done, <coughs> we, we are a user uploaded content platform, and Smule started as a, you know, like any other digital product, started probably last year in India, and we have seen more than seven million monthly active users until today and which is growing. This is 7 like, million just from India? Just from India. Monthly and active users on Smule? Monthly active users, yes. Fantastic. And okay. uh, that accounts for around 11%. We are close to 60, 60 million worldwide monthly active users. Okay. And from India itself, just to give you perspective, around 4 to 5 terabytes of content getting uploaded almost on a daily basis. 4 to 5 terabytes? Yes. So that's, you know, 1,000 MB making a gig, 1,000 gigs making a terabyte? 
Is that the math? And so you've got uh, five terabytes of, of video content that are getting so on, a on lot daily of basis from India. Fantastic. Okay. And uh, and it's all it's all user uploaded. But but tell us what are you doing to get this engagement? What what took off? Uh, how, okay. When did you have this surge of growth, or did you have a surge of growth? Yes, of course. So we did a gig with Arman recently, and that gave us a surge, probably better engagement than even our organic channels. So Arman sang one of his recent song, Teherja. Arman, what did you do? Well, what was the uh, secret? So I was aware of the app. I was right. aware of Smule as an app. I had never used it before this collaboration happened. Right. And uh, I'm glad that, you know, Gurpreet sir from One Digital sort up and uh, from Smule and all of us got together and we collaborated on a very uh, interesting uh, uh, integration with the app. There was a song of mine, Teherja, from the uh, movie October. Right. And uh, so just before I uh, did the collaboration, we also did a small video on my YouTube channel. And coinciding with that release, I also did a, a version where I was singing and my fans could sing along with me. Right. So for, for my fans, I think that was really special. And when I went onto the app, I saw the, uh, saw the comments and the replies. And I saw that so many of my fans were already on Smule and I didn't know about it. So I, I explored a whole new uh, fan base altogether on Smule who were already doing karaoke's of my own songs and I didn't know about it. So I'm, I'm glad that it, it was a different avenue for me to explore as well. So how, how many sort of collabs did you get? Uh, did I miss that number? So with we are close to 18,000 collabs. So on just Arman's song? Yeah, so that, okay. that says Fantastic. around 18,000 users who spent close to 20 minutes each working. So that kind of engagement plus your plays and likes, and those are like in lakhs right now. And it's just been like three weeks. It's just been three weeks. Yeah. yeah. Got it. So what else, anything else that you'd like to share with the audience before we move on in terms of what would be a break? Breakthrough consumer-facing engagement would be Smule as a platform to identify talent as well, which we are working on, working with a few of the music composers, especially down south, we have started this kind of engagement where they are selecting the next, when they are you know, looking for the new singers. Smule is a platform which can evaluate your singing on an automated basis. That helps them a lot. Like, is it fine-tuned for Indian, your, your surtal and harkat? Yeah, absolutely. Versus Western so, music. Yeah, so the master track is uploaded and all the melody is extracted. And that serves as a benchmark. And whoever sings on it is get, you know, getting rated. Was the uh, interesting question, let me put you on the spot here. You did something for Indian Idol. Yes, we did. What was the engagement on that versus what you did with Arman? I'm guessing Arman's blew the blew that out yeah, of the water. Yeah, Arman's was was higher, yeah. of course. In Indian Island, we used the user-generated content around 40 odd songs. Right. So engagement was still very high, better than our organic channel, but yeah. unlike Arman, because Arman, people know him, people like to sing. The gratification the user gets singing with an artist is yeah. actually but, but higher. That was the point that you know I was referring to. Indian Idol is a massive property. It's a global right. property as Idol. One would think, you know, maybe two years ago, the Indian Idol would blow the, you know, blow the metrics out of the water, but, uh, but I'm sure there would be a massive uh, difference between the two. Awesome. So let me, you know, Kailash, just moving to you, um, you know, Masti, as you were sharing with us uh, backstage, is the largest music channel by the metrics. Um, what would be the, 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 you know, with the whole advent of digital consumption, and as Yvonne said, you know, music is now watched, and you don't listen to music, you watch music. Uh, and that's obviously direct competition with TV. And so a lot of people like to talk about how TV is going to kill, uh, sorry, digital is going to kill video uh, and TV. And uh, I'm not certainly, you know, a proponent of that theory, but uh, let me hear, how's it been with massive video growth in India? Have you seen declines in consumption on music? Not at all. I mean, uh, the whole debate of TV versus digital, I believe that it should be TV and digital because right. both have their own equal strengths. Like TV is in conventional medium, yes, digital is the new medium, but they both play on different uh, strengths of it. Like TV has a much wider reach when it comes to the rural areas, and yes, music is uh, by far, yes, on digital, it is the highest consumed category when you talk, and it's about on YouTube, out of the 100 most uh, videos used to, 94 out of 100 is about music. And right. that I believe that TV and digital together shall increase the consumption of music in a particular market. So I believe that they are not it's about not being enemies. They're brothers in, in, in arms together, as we just discussed. Right. Being that the entire consumption of music together is increasing. And I'll also include radio in it. Because there are certain patterns that if, if you're at a particular place where TV is not able to reach, the distribution will be better than through digital. Or if you're in a car, if you're driving, then radio. But if you're at home and if you just need time with your family, then, then there's television. 
And we see in the West that even though there's there's great amount of digital there, but TV has not died. So TV still is a predominant medium, and notwithstanding the fact that digital is growing, radio is there, I believe that they all together are catering to a large chunk of consumers. And it's about uh, at the palette of the consumers what they want to choose. At right. a particular time, it's TV, it's digital. So what would the, uh, but, but you would say categorically that TRPs haven't declined with the growth of video consumption for music. You're seeing growth in consumption, especially in the, in the hinterland, in the, in the smaller towns and cities, or is this growing even in the urban areas? No, no, in both. So we have not seen any kind of declines in terms of absolute number of viewerships. Okay. Like uh, a channel like Musty does about uh, 120 million, reduced out to 120 million viewership in about a month's time, and that has not degrown because of uh, digital growth. Yep. So we, we see that there's a cohesive growth and consumers are wanting each and every medium as per their liking and their situations. So I think this is a really interesting point because I, I think nowhere else in the world, you know, a lot of times India gets compared with China in, in, in growth metrics. And this is one metric that I've seen uh, when, when you engage with anybody from China that they're very conscious of the fact nobody has seen video growth like the way we're seeing in the country. Uh, this is one segment that is actually outpaced. Usually the analysts always over predict the future. In this particular instance, nobody had predicted the scale of growth of video in India. And the fact that TV is growing along with that is, is a great sign of the fact of the consumerism, in, uh, consumer interest in just consuming all of this, that the entire tide is ri rising and not just sort of, it's not, uh, certainly not getting into the cannibalization mode. So that's, that's awesome to hear from the industry perspective. Uh, Kishu, tell us about this 20 lakhs you raised for one song, man. That, that's just breakthrough, you know, uh, just. Uh, okay, so what, it wasn't what did for you one do? song. It wasn't for one song, it was for an entire album. Okay. But uh, out of that, uh, essentially we were at a point where we had released one record already, which was in 2012, it did moderately well. Um, you know, a lot of things fell into place, happened to be at the right place at the right time, the kind of music that we were playing happened to just start getting really popular around the world. And uh, I think, yeah, we sort of inadvertently caught that wave. But yeah, we, were, we then reached a point where we had to make a second record. And we were like, okay, we need to up the production value on this, you know, like take it a step forward from just being like me in my bedroom, mixing it on my own, right, on my head, on headphones, which works to a certain level. Nowadays, the technology is all there. Anyone can do it. But, you know, to really like put something forward that's really professional and, re you know, well packaged, you have, you, you have to start enlisting outside help. So, and obviously this requires funds, uh, which we didn't have, neither did the, in, the little independent label that we were on at the time, they didn't have it either. So their suggestion was just go direct to the fans, crowdfund it. Uh, crowdfunding in 2013, 14 was still... I just wanna add, yeah. so you actually had a label relationship. The label relationship didn't yeah. come in the way of you going through crowdfunding. The label was supportive of actually you going to crowdfunding. There wasn't any, any shame in saying, I have a label backing me, but I'm still gonna go and crowdfund it. Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, this, this I would say is something that's a little unusual because a lot of times you see people who are crowdfunding their product aren't, uh, do not have any kind of They're backing completely whatsoever. Right. So in our case, what the label would do for us is they would do PR, they would do, they would distribute, but they wouldn't really give us any money as far as like creating the product goes, which has its own advantages. You know, you get to keep your masters, you own all your recordings, you own literally everything. The label doesn't own any of your intellectual property or your, the recordings themselves. But on the flip side, of course, like the initial capital for, you know, putting the product together has to come from somewhere. So they were uh, quite receptive of the idea. They said, you know what, go for it. We did it on this website called Pledge. Uh, How many of you know Pledge Music? Raise your hands. Nobody? <laughs> yeah, well, so Pledge Music is where all this all went. How many people are actually from India? So I believe about 2,000, 1,800 or 2,000 people 800 contributed 20 people. lakhs, yes. which, is, which is about 1,000 rupees per person. Yeah. It's quite interesting. And a lot of them came from India? About, yeah, 30, 40, 35, 40 percent of them were from India, yes. Okay. All right. So uh, I, I think the what really worked for us is beyond just offering, you know, like you put in a thousand rupees and you get the album, which is obvious, but the, we, we identified what all skill sets we had besides just the creating and performing of the music itself. And we were like, okay, let's try and put this into, you know, incentives for people to, for, for people to pledge. Yeah, talk, so, talk about that, just list it out. So just in the interest of time, what are the two, three things that you offered consumers yeah. that got them to fund it? Okay, so for example, our singer at the time was a vocal coach, so we offered like a singing, tra a, a vocal training bundle. So it's like you pledge so, so and so, you get the album, you also get like a one hour vocal lesson with our singer. How much did you have to pledge to get the vocal training lesson? Uh, the, the combined cost of the whole thing was, uh, I think, 200, uh, 200 pounds. 
200 like pounds is about two grand, roughly. 2,000 rupees no, to get a... Uh, 200 pounds is like tw was about 20 grand at the time. 20 grand, sorry. 20 yeah. grand to get a vocal training lesson. A vocal training lesson, yeah. Uh, but it mm -hmm. wasn't just one. It was like a series. Got it, okay. Uh, plus the album mm -hmm. itself. Then, what else? Yeah, so then I run a, uh, a DIY studio at home, uh, which has since expanded. But yeah, I would offer a thing like, if you are an artist yourself, I will mix your song for you. So, you, you know, so that's another bundle that we offered. Uh, we offered little personalized things like handwritten lyric sheets, like on really nice pieces of paper. We would write it out with a calligraphic pen, for example, that personalizes it. So this is not just the product as well as say like a picture of yourself with your signature on it. You know, it's like it. other things that we wouldn't, which are a little unusual, which you wouldn't necessarily see everywhere. Is it fair to say that this is, this is in the realm of what pe people tend to offer, but something special happened on this that was not... Pre Did you expect to raise this much? You went over your expectations, We went right? over, yes. So the target that we set was 15,000 pounds, which was like 6,000 for the video, 4,000 for production and uh, for, the, uh, for the mixing, and 5,000 for incidentals and for fulfillment, you know? Got Manufacturing it. CDs, shipping them out. I mean, we obviously have to keep a budget for that. But we ended up making 21,000 pounds, which at the time was about 20 lakhs-ish. So I think it's important that you set your target a little conservatively so that, you know, if you go over, it looks a lot better. You know, it's always better to sell out a smaller venue than it is to have, say, four, 500 people in like a 3,000 cap. And you kept this on for six months, which is unusual. Usually yes, people keep yeah. it on for like a month or something. Yeah, like yeah. so we, we were promoting it over time because, well, six months till the album release, but also it's like this video that we were making did, was right. going to take a long time. It was right, going to take right. two months to put together. Right. You know, it involved like... Create, creating a set, creating puppets, animating them, you know. And it wasn't even like animation in the traditional sense. It was literally like, you you know how you have traditional puppetry shows? Right. So it was That like was the main video. You, yeah, you so it was, right. all the puppets were controlled with wires. You can see them in the video, actually, if you watch the film. And we deliberately didn't take it out on purpose. Because essentially what we were trying to do is do something that isn't being that, you know, is straying from the norm at the time. So really. you raised 20 yeah. lakhs, but you put about 6 lakhs of that into one video. Yeah. That was the lead video for the album, which, mm -hmm. makes, which makes sense. Now, Arman, tell me, uh, Ivan, just uh, I want to ask Arman one related question to this. Okay. For an artist who's, who's broken out like yourself, do you think you'd find it somewhat challenging to go out and crowdfund something because you have the backing of uh, one or more labels, uh, you've reached a certain stature, but if you want to do your indie stuff, are the labels always open to fund the stuff that you want to do versus the Bollywood films? I mean, you're asking, would I do a crowdfunding? Yeah. Thing? Would you look at crowdfunding, or would that be not so cool for you to do now? Probably, if you've reached a, a stage, people don't see you in that light. People associate that with the ups, up and coming musicians or artists. I don't want to like. I don't want to say that you know it's a wrong thing or it's damaging myself right. as an artist. But yeah, but you'd eat their lunch if you came onto the platform and started asking for money. You think that would actually go away from the indie no, but, artist, right? But if if I was uh, definitely uh, you know because the indie scene in India has been suppressed by Bollywood, that I must uh, you know say I've that. I've got to give it to him, man, to say that. Okay. I, I kind artist. of, because there's a lot of uh, musical uh, geniuses in our country who don't yeah. get the outlet to come out, uh, like Keshav, uh, Keshav himself. You, you are way too kind. But, uh, you know, there are such amazing bands, such amazing artists, but they're not getting the outlet because yep. all that consumers are consuming are Bollywood. Like for me, example, I wanted to do an album. I came out, you know it, I came out with an album first on yep. Universal Music. Yep. Yep. My yep. first debut album, it was called Arman. But it just so happened that I needed Bollywood to come with it to give it weight. Because otherwise, if it would come, it would just like go unnoticed. I uh, parallelly, I had this uh, song in Jaiho, uh, which was uh, featuring Salman Khan. And that gave me a considerable amount of push. And that's how my album also got noticed. <laughs>